In this video, we'll show you how to measure the reflectivity of various optical mirrors and model their properties. Optical systems frequently employ multiple mirrors, so inefficiencies multiply. A system with four reflections loses almost half the light when the individual mirrors have 90% reflectivity. Throughput is not the only consequence. Mirror properties also factor into scattered light, infrared emissivity, and output polarization state. Measurement and modeling is important because performance depends strongly on wavelength, angle of incidence, and polarization state, layer thickness, and fabrication process. Moreover, coatings suffer degradation over time depending on environmental conditions. Here we'll compare measured to expected performance for several representative mirrors and discuss advantages and disadvantages of each. This is the setup we'll use to characterize our test mirrors. We laid out the system using the paraxial approximation and checked our results with an exact ray trace. A tungsten lamp is used to illuminate the input slit of a monochromator, which chooses the wavelength to be measured. The illumination assembly consists of a condensing lens, focusing lens, and field lens. The condensing lens collimates the light, which is then focused onto the slit. A field lens placed immediately before the slit is included to collect off-axis rays arising from the filament's finite size. It images the focusing lens onto the collimating mirror of the monochromator. Here you can see how the image changes with and without the field lens. The Ebert FASTE monochromator selects a 2 nanometer wide band pass using a rotating grating, which we drive with a stepper motor. Gratings exhibit strong polarization dependent efficiency. At around 460 nanometers, the output beam is almost perfectly linearly polarized. We use a half wave plate to adjust the plane of polarization so that both the S and P polarization efficiency of the test mirror can be measured with good signal to noise. Following the half wave plate, a 50 50 beam splitter divides the input beam into signal and reference beams. The reference beam is used to monitor illumination of the test sample and compensate for potential time variations. The polarization state of the test mirror is selected with a gland thompson polarizer, mounted on a rotation stage that defines the orientation of the transmitted electric vector. The test mirror is held in a kinematic mount. The focusing lens and detector rotate about the test mirror. The angle of incidence is read off using a vernier dial. The signal and reference photodiode voltages are measured using two lock-in amplifiers. Synchronous detection of the chop signal reduces the impact of scattered light, suppresses 1 over F noise, and permits high dynamic range measurements. To test the fidelity of our system and check for systematic errors, we chose a bare gold mirror to begin with. A properly manufactured gold mirror has easily predicted behavior. The spectrum is reliably calculated as a single thin layer on a dielectric substrate. We use standard matrix methods to compute the transmission and reflection of electromagnetic waves in the stratified medium. The model parameters are the thickness of the layers, the angle of incidence, and the real and imaginary refractive indices of the layer materials. Here are the gold data for the S and P polarization states taken an angle of incidence of 45 degrees. Qualitatively, the reflectivity is what we'd expect, nearing 100% in the infrared, but poor in the blue with a dramatic transition near 550 nanometers. Adding our model prediction shows very good agreement for a 230 nanometer layer of gold on a few silica substrate. The data are also in agreement at the 1% level with the representative mirror measurements provided by the manufacturer. The agreement between these data sets suggests discrepancies near 650 nanometers are due to imperfectly known indices for gold. The next mirror we tested is silver. Unlike gold, silver has high reflectivity in the blue. Unfortunately, silver tarnishes in atmospheric conditions and must be protected with a dielectric coating. Our test mirror has a single layer of silicon dioxide. Compared to gold, it is also more difficult to predict the reflectivity of silver films because of greater variation in optical properties. The dashed and solid lines show two example index measurements reported in the literature. Our data show high efficiency across the band pass and are well represented by 160 nanometer coating of silicon dioxide on 60 nanometers of silver. The data are also in reasonable agreement with the representative mere reflectivity provided by the manufacturer. Silver is a case in which the modeling results are sensitive to the choice of optical constants. Here's a comparison of the same data to a model adopting bulk silver constants instead of the thin film constants adopted previously. The goodness of fit is significantly degraded. We next tested an aluminum mirror also with a protective silicon dioxide overcoat. Aluminum has somewhat poorer performance at the visible than silver, but is more resistant to wear. Here are the data for the test mirror, which suggests 30 nanometers of aluminum overlaid with 190 nanometers of silicon dioxide. Surprisingly, this mirror shows significant deviations from the representative data provided by the manufacturer, which suggests better performance than the blue, but worse in the red. 
We found that the manufacturer data are well represented by a similar 30 nanometer aluminum coating, but overlaid with a thinner layer of silicon dioxide, 150 nanometers rather than the 190 nanometers we measure. We were surprised by this result, so we measured another aluminum mirror with the same part number, but a different batch number. The new mirror performed almost identically to the first, again with a thicker coating. We then tested a third aluminum mirror from a different batch still. This mirror behaved almost identically to the first two. These tests suggest that the representative data provided by the manufacturer may not be all that representative. This cautionary tale underscores the necessity of direct measurement for critical applications where the absolute reflectivity of a single mirror must be known to better than 10%. Shortward of 400 nanometers, the reflectivity of aluminum is better than silver. A protective metal fluoride that preserves this reflectivity is an ideal choice in the UV. We tested a magnesium fluoride coated mirror, which the manufacturer designates UV enhanced aluminum. Of the mirrors we tested, this mirror has the best reflectivity at 400 nanometers. However, its performance in the red and infrared is poor and deficient compared to the manufacturer reference. While we are able to fit the manufacturer reference data with a mag fluoride coating, we are unable to fit our measurements. One hypothesis is that the aluminum oxidized prior to coating with mag fluoride. A model fit including an intermediate layer of aluminum oxide shows good agreement with the data. If you measure and model your mirror, you can predict its performance with confidence over a range of angles and wavelengths. Modeling alone is insufficient due to variability in the fabrication process. Similarly, your mirror may depart from the reference data provided by the manufacturer. Because mirrors are not perfect, and in multi-mirror systems these imperfections increase multiplicatively, the choice of mirror for a given application requires careful evaluation. However, as we've seen, basic measurements and calculations enable reliable predictions of performance. Although we focused on mirror characterization in this video, this technique can be used to measure the transmission and reflection properties of a wide range of components, including filters, beam splitters, polarizers, windows, and gratings. We may investigate these in follow-up videos, so please stay tuned if you're interested. Thanks for watching.